Hello again. Um, this is my second video. I posted the first video on Monday and I received so much positive response. But I also received a lot of people who were wondering if I'd be able to explain a little bit more on what type of cancer I actually have. And so I decided that at least for right now, I'll make another video um, just talking specifically about what type of cancer I have and a little bit of the history of my diagnosis. Um, so just to start off with, the cancer that I have is called alveolar soft part sarcoma and the shortened abbreviation is just ASPS. Um, if you go on to um, the American Cancer Society, they have a fair amount of information, but the most information that I actually got about my type of cancer is just by googling it and just reading all of the Wikipedia articles and all of the other blogs that people have written about it. Um, because honestly there's not that much real information about this type of cancer. I do know that there are about a hundred new cases of this cancer a year which isn't that much compared to other types of cancers like breast cancer and um, prostate cancer, etc. Um, the funny thing is, so this is kind of the history of my diagnosis. Um, I was, bef so in 2006, I had to get a physical before going on um, a mission for my church in 2006. I had to get a physical and make sure that I was fit and ready to go. And I remember in my left inner thigh, I had felt a lump. I thought it was a knot in my muscles, so that's what I told my doctor as he was looking me over. I said, oh, that's just a knot in my muscle. Don't worry about it. Um, everything else is fine, okay. So he okays me, fills out the paperwork, and I go on my mission for two years. Uh, while I was over in Germany, which is where I ended up going for my mission, I noticed that throughout the two years, my, the lump in my leg was growing. Now, <laughs> you would think that I would be alarmed by that, but I just thought that it was some benign thing that was growing, and since it didn't cause any pain, I didn't think that it was any concern, anything of concern. But when I got back, I didn't have insurance, and so in 2009 I finally got insurance again through my dad's work, and I was able to finally go in and get a biopsy of the big lump that was now about the size of a golf ball, at least that I could feel was the size of a golf ball, and it came, they had to send it to the American Cancer Society to be processed, and then when it came back, I remember it was a Friday, April 17th that I got a call while I was at work that I needed to come in right away, that they had some news that they needed to share with me. So I remember leaving work, going to the doctors kind of during my lunch break, and I remember sitting there and my doctor came in and told me that I had, that it was a tumor, that I had a cancer called alveolar soft part sarcoma. Um, the funniest part, and I mean, not that it's funny, but I remember my doctor telling me that he had never heard of it before and that he had to look it up on Wikipedia. And that that's where he got his 
information from about this type of cancer. And the whole time I'm thinking, oh, don't tell your patient that you found out about their cancer from Wikipedia. At least sit, look up a medical journal or something. Uh, or at least just tell them that you found out information from a medical journal. But anyways, so I thought it was funny that he had found out his information from Wikipedia. But I remember sitting there that first appointment and I had to keep myself from crying just because I didn't want to be there by myself. Um in the doctor's office, crying. I, I just wanted to stay strong and I just wanted to keep control, I think. I didn't want to, yeah, I just didn't want to be crying. And um, I remember when I got the biopsy done, I had a friend come with me and that definitely helped having someone there. I remember I was keeping this a secret until I knew exactly what it was. Um, I didn't tell anyone in my family that I was even going to get it checked out, really. Um, because I remember that once I found out um, that I was going to have to tell them, but it was my mom's birthday that weekend, well, it was on the 16th is her birthday, I found out on the 17th, and that weekend, I remember, I went to my sister's house for my mom's birthday, and that's when I told my mom and sister, and of course we all cried, and I think that was the first time that I really cried about my cancer, and so... Um, but ever since then, up until recently, I've just tried to make light of it, I guess. I didn't want it to seem serious. I didn't want people to look at me differently, you know. I, I wanted to be the same Bryce that I was before. Um, and to be honest, even though I've made light of it as much as I could, people have changed over the years. I've changed as well, but a lot of friends have changed in the way that they interacted with me. Um... And, I don't know, I think it's just because the topic of cancer is difficult to talk about, which, again, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this video blog, is so that it would be easier to talk about. Um, and again, that's why I hope that I can share my experience and hopefully either inspire someone to talk about it with their family, maybe they're still keeping it a secret, or at least making it easier to talk about. Because um, I know for me it was easier to joke about it than to actually be serious about the topic. Because whenever I would get serious, I think I personally would get depressed and sad and yeah hopeless because it's especially for my type of cancer the percentage of people who live past 10 years is only 25 percent of people and if I technically had my cancer in 2006 I'm already at the 10 year mark. <laughs> this year will be 
technically my 10 year anniversary, I guess, of having this cancer. And so right now I'm very hopeful and positive about my cancer shrinking, about a clinical trial that I'm going to be starting, which I'll talk more about in another video. Um, but I just wanted yeah, to stay as positive as possible because they always say as soon as you give in to the cancer, that's when it grows and that's when it takes over, I guess. And so I've just always kept in my mind, never give up, never give in, um, just smile, stay positive no matter what. And I've always seen being positive and being happy as a choice. And so I've always made it a choice to be happy. Um, there's another option, be sad and depressed. And I just never wanted to choose that for myself. I'd rather choose to be happy and be positive. And I think that that has been a huge reason on why I've been alive as long as I have, that the cancer has stayed pretty stable for the past 10 years. Um, stable considering all the times it's metastasized and I've had surgeries and radiation and chemotherapy and all these other things, but for the most part, I'm very blessed and very lucky for how stable it has stayed. And yeah, I'm just very grateful for the blessings that I've received because of this experience, this trial in my life. And so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about the beginning of my diagnosis, there's a whole bunch more that's happened in the 10 years, which again, I'll get to in a different video, but um, that's also why and how I've stayed positive, I guess. And so, um, yeah, that's it for my second video. And I'll post this and then if I get more questions, which I already have more questions that I want to address in the next video on Monday, but if I get more questions, I'll definitely watch, or I'll definitely make sure that I try and answer those questions in the next video. Alright, see you next time.